Oh, great description. All right, the Padres have their manager. It is Mike Schill. No surprise, the very safe hire by A.J. Preller, a two-year deal for Mike Schill. Now, we're with you for the next 30 minutes because we have a meeting at 11 a.m. But whether you're here live or on replay, John and Jim with you on the wrap-up show. Make your way in. Subscribe if you're a Padres fan. We view around content for you. Smash the like button for us. You can follow us on Twitter at John Schaefer, at Jim Russell SD. We'll get to every super chat if you want to comment your thoughts on Mike Schill as the next Padres manager. You can click the dollar sign below the chat box. We'll get to every super chat here today. And if you want to become a member, click, uh, click join. You'll get emojis and badges. Uh, not a surprise, Jim. It took a little long to make this determination. Maybe that was for the optics, as if they were actually considering other candidates. Maybe they actually were. But Mike Schilt, on a two-year deal, is the next manager of the San Diego Padres. And what's your reaction? Mm. Eh, I mean, just, eh, it's fine. It's fine. I mean, I mean, I mean there's... Uh, Nothing um, sexy about it. Uh, the two-year deal on the surface might look interesting, but if if you just look at it, one, managers don't really last long, longer than two years here anyway, so it doesn't really bother me at all. And two, that to me signals how important 2024 is. Like, if this doesn't work in 2024, then everyone's gone. And you don't have to worry about um, firing a manager with more than two years left on his deal. One year, who cares? You're probably not getting paid a lot of money anyway, so it doesn't really matter. It just puts, to me, in perspective even more how important 2024 is. Um, you know, if you viewed Mike Schilt as a long-term guy here, you wouldn't give him a two-year deal. Plain and simple. The two years is a, we need to go out and prove it. We need to go out and win. And we need to go out and make sure this thing works. If it doesn't work next year, then everyone's gone. Plain and simple. Yeah, I would think you'd get the two years more based on the equity team, like the the group overseeing A.J. Preller than A.J. Preller's decision. Because to your point, whoever hires Preller could send to whomever is going to have a decision to make. You basically have to win in 2024, and I agree with you. This two-year deal likely pays Mike Schilt less than one year of Bob Melvin. So if Melvin was getting four years and Schild is getting between one and two million, mm -hmm. if you cut ties with him after 2024, yeah. you're only out another one or two million dollars. And, and it's a good point. I mean, if you win, you extend him. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you lose, he's likely out. And this goes back to what we've said now for weeks repeatedly. Mike Schild managed to a level of success in St. Louis. He was like 250 and 200, a little better than that. So he had success, but it's all about what you put around him, obviously. I mean, he's coming out of the Cardinals organization, which is the organization he grew up in. Padres have a lot of questions heading into this year. I would say Mike Schilt is in a tougher spot today than Bob Melvin was two years ago today because, mm -hmm. you know, he had the Blake Snells. Um, he had the higher payroll, Bob Melvin. So you have a lower payroll. You got questions with your rotation. You have questions about Juan Soto. If they put him in a position to be successful, he can probably be successful. He's managed to success in St. Louis. If not, everything changes for 2025, and you have another manager for Fernando Tatis Jr. and company a year from now. And a lot of things that will be said about Mike Schilt today and tomorrow and leading up to the start of the 2024 season, to me, sounds like a lot of the same things that were said about Bob Melvin leading up to his first season in 2022 and throughout his tenure with the Padres experience manager, one manager of the year has gone to the postseason, right? Respect the players. Like a lot of the things that you will hear about Mike Schilt or people saying about Mike Schilt is very interesting because it feels like it's a lot of the same things that were said about Bob Melvin. And then now that Bob Melvin's out the door, it's like, this guy's completely different than Bob. How much different? I don't know. It is interesting how 
it took all this time to get back to Schilt. Um, but it was it was something that I feel like we all thought it was going to happen. I think the first day that that they were looking for a, a manager after Bob, it, I think we all said Mike Schilt or Ryan Flaherty, and it was been report it was reported that it was either Mike Schilt or Ryan Flaherty. So when you think about it, this whole time through the Bob Melvin issues with with AJ Preller, this team and organization was looking at either Mike Schilt or Ryan Flaherty. There was the the whole due diligence part. That's fine. Okay. But um, it is interesting how this whole time, through this whole entire search, it went back to the guys that was being reported on from the very beginning. I, I don't see Shield as Melvin. If anything, at best, he's Melvin Light. Melvin had pick of the litter jobs two years ago. Everyone wanted to talk to him. The Yankees three years ago. Oh, yeah. The I don't Giants think he's repeatedly. Melvin. He's nowhere near the I know. credentials or respect this guy didn't interview for a job for three years yeah I know. bob melvin was pulled out of contracts multiple times so yeah i mean he's and also i think he's way more fiery i think melvin yeah. might have been like that when he was younger but mm -hmm. anything you see from Schilt behind the scenes and even when he was a third base coach or in the dugout with the padres two years ago the whole incident with the giants i mean he's fiery which i think ultimately means players manager um but I don't know. I mean, the philosophical differences thing with the Cardinals, what you love is he's a Cardinals, you know, he's out of the Cardinals organization. There's so many managers out of the Cardinals organization. So you like that. What you don't love is he left because of philosophical differences, never to be heard from again. Right. Never interviewed again, never on a staff until right now. It gets a two-year deal, which doesn't scream, hey, we got a lot of faith. And again, maybe that comes from above AJ. I would think it does. But mm -hmm. I, I think it's a little bit of Melvin Light. I'm not criticizing it. I was going to be critical of any hire, yeah. and I wasn't going to be rah-rah based on any hire either, maybe other than Benji Gill, which would have given me a, a little bit level of, you know, who knows, because he's like a backup quarterback, so you get excited because right. you've never Same. really seen him before. But, yeah, I think it's fine. I do have questions about him, and I do have questions about the team, and, you know, I don't have any strong feelings one way or the other. I just I think he's Melvin Light at best. Yeah, and I, I I wasn't saying that that he's the same type of guy as Bob Melvin. I'm just saying the things that are going to be said about Mike Schilt are the same things that were said about Bob Melvin. Mm -hmm. Experience, postseason, players manager, you know, all this type of stuff that we all loved about Bob Melvin is being going to be said about Mike Schilt here. Sure. I guarantee you today at the press conference, I guarantee you they're going to be talking about experience. And I guarantee you they're going to be talking about relationships with players and that's the exact same things they talked about with bob melvin and and i don't think um that i think bob melvin's a better manager i think bob melvin has the better credentials i said this and i'll say it again the the, the manager was hired after bob melvin bob melvin from day one is a downgrade until proven otherwise so is mike schultz the biggest downgrade over bob melvin no i, I think ryan flaherty would have been in that category is oh boy right i that 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 would have been the oh boy higher um the benji gill like you're right it, it would have been a oh this is this is interesting kind of sexy i like it this is new but i don't know if this team is you know necessarily is in a position to go out and do that type of hire right now if you get what i'm saying like yeah. they're in a position where they need safe and potentially stability and you know things that the qualities that bob melvin had but just like tweaking a different type of um relationships with with aj preller and and now the question goes to hey can these guys work together i mean you got fired from a job because of philosophical differences and you're going to a position where it's all about philosophical differences with anybody aj preller has hired true but he's got the two years i mean he's he's got two years with aj where they've worked you know, he's got really it, one, John. Like when you think about it, like it, it it's if it doesn't work in no, 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 no. He's work. He's worked for AJ for the last two years. Oh, oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they, they should be familiar with each other. If AJ's well, got questions manager. about Mike Schill, yeah, but I mean, they should have a familiarity with each other where there's got to be some level of comfort. I mean, what? I don't think Schill takes it if it doesn't make sense for him, and I don't think Preller offers it just because he's backed into a corner. I mean, he had other candidates. So from Preller's perspective. I think he thinks it's a better fit than what he had previously. 
or he wouldn't have made the hire. I agree with that, but I also think it's much different when you're just working behind the scenes than when you're the manager of the team. Well, of course, but I mean, he was kind of working for, he was like literally working for AJ directly the last two years, right? <laughs> sometimes yeah. in the dugout, sometimes in player development. I think he knows the system. Yeah. Hey, Schilt, good, of course. Good for uh, Schilt, man. He he got his way to the top and he knew who, who to talk to and he got, a, he got the job. Yeah, and maybe good for him. I mean, we'll see how long... It lasts. All right. If you're here, please subscribe. You're on content for Padres fans. Smash the like button for us. We'll get to every super chat. How do you feel about this hire? We'll get to the super chats. Click the dollar sign below the chat box. We do want to thank our title sponsor here on the wrap up show, Mark Nimitz. We couldn't do this without Mark. Such a great supporter of our work. He's been with us since day one, which is over two years now on the wrap up show on YouTube. If you have insurance needs, contact Mark. San Diegan, lifelong Padres fans, fan, take it from us. He is a great insurance agent with great communication and service. He can save you $750 or more. I've got a homeowner's life insurance and earthquake insurance policy through Mark. So he's a great, great insurance agent. You get a quote online, anything you need. Mark can take care of you. Click the link in the description to get to his website, auto home, renter's life, whatever it is. If you support this channel, please support a local business. If you want to save money on your insurance, get in contact with Mark Nimitz by clicking the link in the description down below the title sponsor of the wrap up show. Yeah, all his information only is always above my head. M Nimitz at farmersagent.com. When you reach out to uh, our buddy Mark, let him know that John and Jim from the wrap up show sent you. I, I think it's easy to say. I think there were people that were very critical of Bob Melvin. I think there were those that were in Bob Melvin's corner. And I think those will say, you know, hey, he's going to be better than Melvin. And here's why. And you can look at the 2022 postseason. You can look at bullpen right. usage. You can look at the collapse or just the utter disappointment of 2023. But the truth is, and you know this as well as anyone, and Padres fans do too. You get in the thick of it and you start watching these games. And if they're not winning, you're putting it on him. The, you know, a portion of the blame will be put on him. And if they win, you'll mm -hmm. say good hire. It's as simple as that. Yep. Nothing else matters. If they win, it works. If they don't, it doesn't. We'll put it on shield if they don't. We'll give them some credit if they do. Now, I don't think ultimately he's going to determine at what level they win in 2024. So it's now on Preller to put a roster together where Mike Schilt can win. If they win, great. If not, they'll be looking for a new manager. It is as simple as that over the next year. Yeah, look, if you take away uh, Juan Soto, you don't bring back Blake Snell, you're not bringing back Josh Hader, uh, you have to look for three new starters in your rotation, you are bringing up guys from the minor leagues, you don't go out and make any significant upgrades to your roster through free agency other than the dumpster diving. Like, you know, you're right. It, it, if it, it, the, the roster next year is, it, like, infinitely more important mm -hmm. than who they hired today, even though I, I would have argued Ryan Flaherty would have been the worst of the four candidates that were out there. By the way, there was actually five. Did you see this? Yeah. Adrian, Adrian Gonzalez, Gonzalez. Yeah. interviewed. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, I would have argued that, you know, of the four that we knew of, mm -hmm. Ryan Flaherty was would have been the worst of the hires. Mike Schilt, okay, that's fine. Um, uh, it's what it is, what it is, whatever. Uh, but uh, going forward, the roster is so much more important than who the manager is, and it will be interesting to see who the the remainder, uh, what the staff looks like as well. It'd be interesting to see if if maybe Benji Gill is a part of the staff, or maybe if Ryan Flaherty is still a part of the staff. I I would prefer. Uh, Ryan Flaherty not to be a part of the staff going forward because it just would be a weird dynamic there. And I don't think he's really that good of a offensive coordinator or whatever you, you want to call him. Um, I think an upgrade there is definitely needed for sure. Um, but you have Ruben Niebla. Okay. He's remaining on the staff and you have Mike Schilt down there. So it is what it is. Uh, not really overly excited about it. Not really like down, like as far as criticizing them, not going to really too much criticize today. Um, it is what it is, but it's the safest hire. That's pretty much what it is. Safest hire. All right, let's get to the first super of the day. I agree with you. It's a very safe hire, which is what you would think an organization would do during unstable question mark times, which is what they're in right now. And only added to that, of course, with the passing of Peter Seidler a week ago today. Uh, let's get to the first super of the day. Matt, thank you for your membership as well. Guys, if you want to contribute and support, click the dollar sign. Below the chat box, he wants to know, will Schilt be able to hire his own staff? It's a great question. Hopefully, we learn more at 1 p.m. He says, if so, let's hope he brings some hitting coach from St. Louis, fresh new perspective. If there's one thing they've had, it's new perspectives when it comes to hitting coaches. 
Uh, Ruben Niebla, we're told, will be back. She'll obviously the new manager. It will be interesting to see what they do with the staff, guys like Ryan Flaherty, which we've been talking about, and others. Who comes back? Who is new? I'm sure there'll be a little bit of both. I'm sure you'll have some continuity, and I'm sure you'll have some change on the 2024 staff. I would think so. I mean, the, to to have the only change really be Bob Melvin on the staff would be kind of head scratching. Well, of course, that. Melvin's already made hires off the staff as well. Yeah, I mean, I mean Matt Williams and Ryan Christensen. That's right. not really like losing a lot, but I mean, when you have your pitching coach and your technically, I guess, hitting coach, if they still remain. Um, yeah, I think there needs to be upgrades to the staff, in particular on the offensive side. Um, and uh, <clears throat> for me, Ryan Flaherty, if he wasn't going to be hired as manager, like, what 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 is his purpose here other than being Manny's buddy? Yeah, that's an interesting question. What they do do with him, and what Mike Schilt wants to do with him, and if he wants to be back, like that. That's an interesting question. I, I hope yeah. he's asked about it. AJ today, what's Ryan Flaherty's status moving forward? He interviewed for the job. Will he be back? Right. I just I, I don't see any. Uh, I mean, look, if I'm interviewing for a job, and uh, someone else that I like, say we're both interviewing for the same, and I job, get the job, and you get the job, and they're like, well, we still want you here. But he's your boss. I'd be like, perfect. Uh, I love that. No, I'd hate that. Exactly. But, but that's that's. I, I wouldn't. I, I don't know. I I just don't think if I'm Ryan Flaherty, I would want to be here unless because because look, we know if they don't win, like AJ's gone, and we know that Ryan Flaherty is like an AJ guy. So why would you stay here if you know, like, if you don't win? then your main guy in your corner is gone. My only, right, exactly. It's a great point. If, if everyone's blown out, you're not the next manager. Everyone's blown no. out. Like they, yeah, they're, the, next, the next regime isn't hiring Ryan Flaherty off back-to-back -back failures of coaching staffs and seasons. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, it's interesting. Like, it, Well, it's always about what other options you have. To your point, let's say you have to work for me tomorrow, which I love. Um, <laughs> you may go if you have another job offer. But yeah. does Ryan Flaherty, as these staffs are put together, have a job offer that's better than the job he has? Probably not. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I, I just yeah. think that I just I, I just look at it and that area of this team needs to be upgraded in the biggest way. What do, what do you want to hear from? What do you want to hear AJ say at 1 p.m.? Whether it's related to Shield or not. Because he'll be asked probably about the payroll. Certainly the Peter stuff. Completely fair. Yeah. And there, there might be a lot on that. Maybe this isn't. Maybe this isn't the full appropriate time to decipher the entirety of the roster and talk payroll right. and talk Juan Soto's future. And that's reasonable. I get that. If they are talking about the team beyond Mike Schilt, beyond Peter Seidler's passing, what would you want to hear today from A.J. Preller? Well, one, why? I mean, why a two-year deal? Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, cool. You know, obviously... Uh, you know, reports were that Mike Schilt was a leading candidate even maybe before Bob Melvin got fired. Like, why did it take so long? Yep. Um, you know, the, the future of Ryan Flaherty on the team for sure. Yep. Um, what What's different from Mike Schilt than Bob Melvin, I guess? I, yep. I mean, those type of things. Uh, if that's just the Bob Melvin side or the Mike Schilt side of it, I don't really know what else... I'd want to hear because it's going to be a lot of fluff other than of course. other than, uh, you know, what they'll be talking about with, I'm sure, uh, Peter and the future of the organization. Um, Maybe like, hey, let me make as of right now, who do you report to? Like, like, is it Eric Casenda? Is it who is it? You know, like, who is your boss? Even though I uh, are you talking about Preller? Yeah. 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 Um, and, yeah, that's a good question. And is Kitsenda so, the interim chairman or is he the chairman? Like, is he, yeah, is, is he the interim point chairman? person? I feel like those are two different things, right? I know. And that's what it said. It said he's the chairman and the interim point person in the release. Because going forward, it's like, I would much, I, I'd be totally cool if the point person for this team was, was Eric Gruppner. That'd be fine. I mean, he's good with the media. He's good with, you know, talking about the team and he doesn't come off as a guy that, um, you know, 
doesn't sound professional. You know what I mean? Like it, if he's the if he became the point person, I'd be fine. But I don't I don't but know if what he's the, the point person. Be- isn't he part of ownership? The other the thirty teams that that go to Major League Baseball owner meetings, yeah, are represented by ownership. There's no CEO representing a team. He'd have to be part of ownership. Okay, then that, that, right? that's my question: Is what is a point person? Is is that point person a part I of ownership, or owner. is it just like a the talking head for the organization? Well, look at the last two: Ron Fowler and Peter Seidler. I mean, it's someone True. I think typically that represents ownership, and and maybe Eric Gruppner in the future is held in that regard or part of that structure. I would think ultimately it's someone with a Seidler last name. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they don't want it, and maybe it is Eric Kitsenda because that was the wishes of Peter Seidler. All right, let's get back to the chat in a moment. Do want to remind you guys about our longtime partner on the wrap-up show, our good friends at Aura. Their co-founder, Will, a huge Padres fan, lifelong San Diegan. They've got a Black Friday sale going on right now. Save an extra 20% on new subscriptions. You can see the code at the top of the screen if you click on the link down below, BFCM23. BFCM23 at Aura, 20% off all new subscriptions, plant-based products to get you healthier for the new year. You need to check them out. Huge supporters of our channel. Whether it's a probiotic, I take one every day. Whether it's a pre-workout supplement, whether it's a protein for after workouts, omega-3 oils. If you're taking fish oils, take the omega-3 oil that's plant-based from Aura. Sleep pills, I took some last night. Immunity pills, great, great products. I've been taking their probiotic for years. It's an amazing product for digestion, heart health, mental health, and more. If you support our work, please support our sponsors, whether it's Mark Nimitz when you have an insurance need, Aura when you look to get healthier, ORA.organic, or click that link in the description down below. And again, save an extra 20% on new subscriptions with code BFCM23. BFCM23, Black Friday sale going on right now. Click that link in the description down below. Yeah, go there right now if you guys want to start, um, you know, looking for things for Christmas for for family members and and potentially somebody that that wants to get into uh, you know being healthier in their lives. Go there right now. Aura has everything that you need. Uh, obviously, their Black Fr- Friday sale coming up here uh, at the end of the week. Uh, www.ora.organic. It's the healthiest uh, supplements on the market, all plant based, all organic. Uh, go pick some stuff up, and uh, you'll thank us later. Do you think we learn anything more about the coaching staff today? Probably not. Not this will be solely uh, the Mike Schilt news today, and maybe um, in a uh, addressing of yeah of Peter Sather's passing by the organization. I wonder who One speaks question. today. Did you see who it said who's going to speak at the press conference? Is it uh, just no, AJ. Who? I, I don't know. I, I was wondering if anyone else would speak today, like Eric Atsenda or Eric Grubner. Um, you have only Mike Schilt and AJ Preller. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, um, another question I'm sure that will be asked is how much say will Mike Schilt have in, in hiring of the coaching staff? Cause we know yeah. Preller in the past with, you know, especially Jace Tingler and Andy Green, he had his fingerprints and hands all over the hires. N- he did have some say in, in the uh, in the staff for for Bob Melvin, and he did a great job getting Ruben Nieva. I, I don't know if that was one hundred percent Preller or if it was a collaboration, but he was the first guy that was hired before Bob Melvin, if you all remember. Um, so we'll see. And I I don't think Bob Melvin or I keep saying Bob Melvin. I don't think Mike Schilt <laughs> is a guy that is just going to be a complete yes man. Ryan Flaherty, I think, would be, and maybe Benji Gill to an extent, just because it's his first. It'd be his first job. I think Mike Schultz going to have some pushback here and, and have some say in who he wants on the staff for sure. Um, yeah, but you, you know, Preller is obviously going to be involved. Of no course, doubt about that. of course. And, and I would think that some of the members of the staff under Melvin, since Schultz was here and Preller's been here, stay. I would think, and I would think mm-hmm. some, like typical off seasons, would go. And I would think Schilt, through his connections to the Cardinals might have interest in working with others that he worked with in St. Louis. I mean, yeah. he had success in St. Louis. I forget the total record. 253 and 199, three playoff spots. It's like a five. He, he'd be the winningest manager in Padres history. Oh, right? easily. I mean, close. close. <laughs> yeah, close so, probably. so, yeah, so he had success, which means he has coaches. I'm sure he would, you know, enjoy working with based on that. I mean, he, he, was, he was fired kind of at the top. He was fired at the top. They were coming off a winning season, had a couple of 90-win years. Um, 
Yeah, so I would think you, you'd want to work with others that you've coached with and had success with previously and kind of mesh that with the staff that you have currently. But my guess is this. The organization kind of got its way. I, I think the organization has more say than Mike Schilt because it's a two-year deal. And that doesn't scream, you know, what was the Melvin? The, the Melvin deal was three, three. which I guess Everything was crazy. Three. Everything was three. Yeah. Every, every, that, every hire for AJ was three. Okay, and, and Andy Green got four. Um so, yeah, I, I guess two isn't crazy compared to three. It just, to me, screams like the organization's in control when you get a two-year deal as opposed to a longer deal. Hence, they'll be making the decisions mm -hmm. on his coaching staff is, is what it speaks to me. Yeah. That's how I see it from the outside. It's It screams to me uh, very, very cautionary. Like, we are not going to... I mean, when AJ has three years left on his deal and you give this guy two... Yeah, that 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 to me is a um, from an organization standpoint, kind of the pressure of you don't win next year. It's all gone and we don't have to, like, worry about paying out a manager for two other seasons. Right. You know, like pairing him with AJ for three more for three years to match up, I thought would be the case here. Whoever they hired, it just kind of made sense to me. Mm -hmm. But two years to me kind of says AJ's on the hot seat. Yeah, it says that if we can, if we need a new manager in a year, we can do it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, and I, I guarantee you, Mike Schultz not getting paid four million dollars a year. No, I mean, I don't. I, I probably guarantee he's not making four million over two years combined. It might be like a two-year, three million dollar deal. Yeah, because I want to say the previous managers, like a Green or a Tingler, was rumored to be in the one million range. Yeah. So you went from one to four with Melvin. You guarantee twelve million to Melvin. Yeah. There's no way you're guaranteeing anywhere near that to Mike Schilt. And again, if if money's an issue, then save it everywhere you can. Now this isn't a crazy savings, but they're saving from four to one and a half is the savings. Two and a half million dollars is yeah. is real money. Right. Right. So, so they're, it, they're definitely saving. Just, yeah. It it screams, hey, you better win next year. And if you win next year, then great, you get an extension. But if you don't, then um, everybody's gone. Yeah, I would think, I, I agree with you, I would think you get an extension if they win next year, although I would say Bob Melvin got them to the NLCS in year one. It did not get an extension. Yeah, but they hated each other. <laughs> Even like, after year one, that was the, yes. the takeaway? Like, we hate each other? John, after year they, one, they Bob spoke, was... They had a very, very soft, gentle press conference after the season, laughing, enjoying each yeah, other's well, company, smiling. Remember it? Well, yeah, I remember that. I don't believe any of it, because I don't believe anything okay. AJ ever says. So why and, did Melvin and, come back for a year two? Because I mean, you leave after an NLCS run, it's a little weird, but at the same time, like it's I mean, talk, talk to Marty. She has said it on the air. Like after year one, Bob was ready to leave because he couldn't stand AJ. Hmm. And AJ was like type of kind of the same way with Bob. Like if they if they left after one year, it would have been a disaster from a PR standpoint. But I think both men deep down have been like, I'm good with it. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, guys, as we've told you about for a long time, if you're looking for a great place to play fantasy sports, you need to do so with our friends over at underdogfantasy.com. If you use promo code PODSWRAP, P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P, you're going to get a 100% deposit match, now up to $100. You don't have to deposit $100. You can deposit $10, get it matched. 10 becomes 20, 20 becomes 40, and so on and so forth. Best and easiest place to play fantasy sports, whether it's the drafts. You don't even have to draft. You can have an auto draft, and then they take care of the rest. Waivers, none of them. Trades, none of them. They set your lineup. You can do daily drafts, weekly drafts, year-long drafts, all sports. And then the pick are unbelievable. You're just picking higher or lower, points scored in the NBA, touchdowns thrown in the NFL. Simple hires or lowers, you get a couple of them right, and you can win big. So pick drafts. If you're playing fantasy sports, do so with Underdog Fantasy. Get, get to underdogfantasy.com. Use the Underdog Fantasy app. And again, use promo code PODSWRAP. That's P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P. And get a 100% deposit match up to $100. Again, promo code PODSWRAP, P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P. You will get a 100% deposit match up to $100. I also want to remind our viewers real quick. I pinned it in the chat, Jim. Hopefully it is there. About our friends over at FOCO. They've got... A couple of limited edition bobbleheads for the holidays going on right now, including, you can see on the screen, a Blake Snell 2023 Cy Young Award bobblehead. There are oh. 123 available. They will sell out. 
I'm told all these bobbleheads we told you about this year sold out. 123, image not yet available because this is so new. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Juan Soto. They've got the Silver Slugger bobblehead. This is available for pre-order. There are 123 available. It will sell out. And then you've got the Tatis Gold Glove bobblehead, 123 available. They will sell oh, out. Wow. Jim, you've got these. You've been a big fan of FOCO for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, tell our viewers that if they want these things, uh, they need to do so now. This is the uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. FOCO that I got a while ago, maybe yes. two years ago. And the quality of these things are like amazing so it really is amazing uh yeah foco is the best bobblehead company out there it's the most accurate bobblehead company out there if you're not if you don't live in san diego and you're watching and you're not able to go to padres games get you know bobbleheads there go check out foco their bobbleheads are awesome click the link in the description down below or pinned in the top of the chat if you want these this is perfect for the holidays with black friday coming up this is perfect for the holidays get them before they're gone Padres fans, whether you're here live or on replay. Much more on the hiring of Mike Schilt and reaction to A.J. Preller's press conference with Schilt coming up at 3 p.m. on John and Jim. Please join us 3 p.m. iHeartRadio app, John and Jim, San Diego Sports 760. Find our John and Jim YouTube channel. You can join us throughout the course of the afternoon beginning at 3 p.m. As always, subscribe. You're on content for Padres and baseball fans. Smash the like button for us. Follow us on Twitter at John Schaefer at Jim Russell SD. Support our partners, our title sponsor, Mark Nimitz. If you have an insurance need, click the link in the description down below. If you want to get healthier, ORA.organic, click the link in the description down below. If you're playing fantasy sports, use promo code PADSWRAP, P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P. Get a 100% deposit match at underdogfantasy.com. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Much more on a busy Padres offseason coming up today at 3 on John and Jim. And for Jim, I'm John. This has been The Wrap-Up Show.